On the last episode of Mighty Car Mods, I revealed my new car, which is this Lotus Exige S240. Today, we're going to find out everything that's right with it and everything that's wrong with it with a little bit of help. Uh, I don't know anything about this car yet, but there's a few things that I'm suspect about. So today, we're going to find out exactly what is going on. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. I am super stoked to have this nuggety supercar in the Mighty Car Mods garage, but there is a bunch of stuff that is broken and a bunch of stuff that I need to find out about. I have no experience with this car at all. Never driven one other than last time when Marty and I took it down the street, never worked on one. Uh, so I thought I would bring in a couple of experts to help me. So today I've got a couple of mates here. Uh, this is Richie. G'day Richie, Hi, mate. Nice um, this is Lee, Hiya, how you thank going? you very much for going down. These guys are from Lotus, Simply Sports Cars. These guys are uh, from England, man. Well, that, <laughs> <laughs> the real deal. Can we assume that I know nothing about this, and it's not even an assumption, that's a fact. <laughs> I know nothing, can you tell, what are we looking at here? What What is this? Let's start top down. It's a Lotus Exige S240, which means it makes 240 horsepower, it's got a supercharged 2ZZ Toyota engine. Right. That's correct. And the rest is this, is it modified? Is it factory? What are your eyes telling you so far? Lotus are known for doing a few special editions and um, obviously it's a Lotus Exige. I think yep. we, we've established that, but um, back in 08, Lotus done a special edition called a 240S or 240 Sport. And on that car, they use some forged lightweight wheels. Yep. Um, this long scoop scoop on the yeah. roof. This was the only car. This and the Cup 240 had had this. I love that, like an actual yeah. functional and scoop. And it actually works. Yeah. When you, you see a car yeah. with a scoop, you know it's badass. Yeah. That's right. I mean, your supercharger <laughs> yeah. here, you got to charge. You know, feed the intercooler and everything. Yeah, it's just yeah. Ram, ram air effect. Just get that air, getting it, getting it in there. But yeah, upright brakes. Say so about that. Yeah, so two peaks as well. Yep. Yeah. So nice, just, nice brakes. Proper four AP, AP racing. Four pole AP. Oh, so AP. the Exige normally doesn't come with those. No, usually no. you got the the Exige. Yes, would have the standard uh, one, uh, two pot, sorry, yep. there, with a smaller disc. So now this is a 308 mil two piece disc, so which is better yeah, for the four pot track. caliper. Right. And all that sort of stuff. And then okay. a four pot AP racing caliper. And our so. only issue with this is I believe the balance may be out a little bit because we would like to probably upgrade. The yeah. rears are still standard. They've got the one pot Brembo's on the yeah, rear. Yeah. Oh, right. So okay. you ideally you'd put a two pot on the rear and yeah. you'd balance the braking back out again. And shave it may one be a tenth little... of a nanosecond off your track maybe. time. It may, be, it, <laughs> it may be a little bit over <laughs> If we do that brake on, it would be, if that was from a standard XHS, then you'd put the standard two pots, yeah, like Lisa, onto the rear. And then yep. it just enhances it even more. Like okay. Brakes are phenomenal on this. Because it's so yeah. lightweight as well. The All this carbon fibre stuff, that's aftermarket, right? It is, like that's right. The, well, they come with a splitter, yeah, but it's because it, that's carbon fibre, Is that's aftermarket. Uh, side sills aftermarket and the biggest scoop, side scoops are aftermarket. Too. Okay. Yep. yep. And also the wing. Looks like it's all coming from the same, I reckon it's all Reverie from the same place, yep. company in the UK that makes some carbon. Okay. Um, looks like the wing, the wing, yeah. Side skirts and scoops, all from there. That's not factory, is it? Like this big diffuser thing? This, this is factory, this diffuser, yeah. So normally it's got grills across here. They've okay. all been removed and we make these little... This is actually one of our products from Simply Sports Is that cars. yours? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, nice, we've yeah. drawn, made, designed that many years ago. Um, we didn't fit it to this car, but yeah, nah. someone's brought it. Uh, you got the tow link kit on there as well, which is a, another modified product from Earth Guys. From okay. CC, yep. So it's a lot stronger. There's a brace bar in the middle, so that also all helps for um, circuit driving. And is that something that someone would have modified for the track? Like someone's not yeah. going to do that mod if they're yeah. just driving out on the street. Yeah, but designed in house from us. From us. Guys. Oh, you guys so, did that too. Oh, we're all designed yeah. in house. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we we got... designed those about ten years ago and sold lots of them. Um, the important thing about that is it's a spherical bearing on the outer end, so it's yeah. a proper rose jointed uh, tow link. So it has much better control over the wheel. So okay. you might set your toe up to say, you know, I've got a one mil of toe in when you're sitting on a, a vehicle aligner. But when you're hard in a corner at whatever it might be, 200 k's an hour, and the, the wheel's all loaded up, if that joint has compliance in it, it won't have one mil of toe in anymore. It may yep. have three, may have four, okay. depending how much compliance there is. And all of a sudden, that moment where you really need one mil of toe in so that you're 
you got the most contact patch on the road, yep. you won't have it. So that's why we did that tow link kit, okay. was to make it stronger and, and better, better control yeah. of the wheel. You're a qualified mechanical engineer, aren't you? I am. Because you sound like one. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some modifications on the outside. There's some option wheels. There's some option brakes. There's all of this stuff. The front end, this is like an MR2, right? Radiator at the front and then it plums down yeah, to, to the engine. Down the and then you might work going to the rear, yeah, to the engine at the back there, yeah. Is that factory as well? Because it kind of, it looks... No, that's modified again. That's a triple bypass radiator. So it's all aluminium uh, header tanks on it as well. So standard, they come out with plastic header tanks, which are problematic. Do they ever go kabang on weed, the end? They can weep, the seals weep, or in worst case scenario, they can, the, the actual plastic can crack and then bang. Right, yeah, okay. That way you lose all your water. But these, but uh, that's no seals awesome. in this one, it's all no, welded. It's all and fabricated yeah. properly, nice header tank, it's a nice bit of kit. Yeah. So... Yeah, and the water just passed, nice triple bypass means your water just is... Yeah. channeled for it three times before yeah. just to make sure you get a lot more efficient cooling. cooling. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, it goes back you don't really have cooling back. problems with Lotuses. They're no. really nice. You've got the, the big air going in under here. It exits out lovely. Um, yep. You can put big banging power in them and you don't get cooling problems. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, that's Lotus. a nice little modif modification to have, you know, as yeah. it yeah. at the moment. Because um, yeah. these make 240 horsepower, but you've, you've got them up to like 500 and something, oh, haven't you? Oh, they can do, yeah, they can go yeah. silly, yeah. I, I had a look at it. What I really like is just like the simplicity of this going up, the clip going over, that yeah. holds the boot. Like well, it's, really, it's all about simplicity. Um, yep. Uh, and adding lightness. Adding hey, lightness. I've been doing my reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simplified and add lightness, that's what we yes. do. So yeah, you've got, it's, it all looks pretty standard in there. So. Except that Lotus have stuck one of their plates on a Toyota engine. Well, that's about it. They've got to be in there somewhere. But yeah, so standard headers, um, standard intercooler. It's only this, we, you can get a bigger intercooler for these. Yep. And uh, supercharger down here. It's already pretty fat, it's isn't it, that intercooler? Pretty like fat, it's kind but you can of, get a lot fatter again. Than yeah. Probably here. yeah, okay. A lot bigger core, so... Uh, Does it need that? It does. Oh, so we're doing it more upgrades. Yeah. We're doing a bigger supercharger. More boost and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so then, yeah. The, the biggest thing we yeah. find, though, is sometimes you go for, like, the intercooler and you say, let's make the intercooler bigger, better, whatever it might be, charge called. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What we like to do is go back one step further and go, was there a problem before that that was creating too much heat? Yeah, so yeah, okay. So with the supercharger that's in there, the model in there is called an MP62, and with this engine, it revs to, like, what's it, rev, rev run, rev, oh, eight and a half grand, isn't it? The, it's, uh, eight, eight, six, I think. Soft it revs my six, pants eight. off in a yeah, tunnel run yesterday. Six, eight to seven, two, well, the cams don't come, come on yeah. until six two, so you really spend most of your time above six thousand, you know, six and a half thousand RPM. Yeah. So anyway, at that RPM, the supercharger is spinning at about twenty two thousand RPM, yeah. and when it's spinning at that rate, it's not very efficient. Okay. It's, it's producing as much hot air as what it is pressure, and therefore, yes, you're creating pressure, but because of all that inefficiency, you're then trying to take all that back out again with charge cool systems and everything else. So what we do is go back another level and go, well, can we fix that problem back at the beginning and put a more efficient compressor in there? Yeah. Um, maybe spin it a bit slower yeah. um, and produce a similar amount of pressure. Um, and then don't produce the heat in the first okay. place. If so too fast, it gets too hot, and then it just it starts pulling out time. And yeah, so okay. that's something we've you're done losing, quite a lot. Then, right. Anyway, um, a day, yeah. But We've, nothing disturbing in here that you guys look at and go, meow, meow. No, 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 nothing no, is a problem. So far. Yeah, like, it, obviously, we need to, it, you can go a lot faster than more power, but you've yeah. got a good starting point. You're, you're not it's all bog standard. At the it's a good it hasn't thing, even had yeah. an air filter. Like, look, this nah. is a Toyota airbox. It's still, it's still got a airbox on it. It's a like, super stock. Well, the first yeah. thing you do is induction kit and the headers, you know, so yep. it was intake and exhaust first, the mild. mild is that, this is, and this is the induction over here, is that right? Like in the, yes. is that, is that, yeah. that, that's what's yeah. being that's been there? Yeah, that's in let's yeah. engine, yeah. So yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so you, yeah, yep. filters down And do, do people run pod filters on these or they put drop-in filters oh, or you yeah, do a whole yeah, cold yeah. air pods, intake? Pods pod normally filters, yeah. or a cold air intake. Yeah. There's, there's, there's options, yeah. there's different ways to do it. But yeah, pod filters normally does the job because you're getting a nice fresh flow of air from here. Yeah. And I gather they sound the balls as they well. They sound much better, They're awesome. They tack straight onto the supercharger so then get that wine going and it just enhances the wine. Oh, yes. So you get good induction noise but then you get you get supercharger wine at the same time. RPM range with that, with yeah. that supercharger one as it does, it's just music to read. Yeah, the Amazing. induction noise is so much better than the exhaust noise. It's important yeah. to keep the induction noise there and not go too yeah. heavy on the exhaust noise yeah, because okay. you lose you lose that effect. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's kind of just really expanding my like understanding of, of yeah. this whole yeah. other culture of cars, and because. I was just getting my ass handed to me by Lotuses on the track. <laughs> when I was here. Well, well, that's what Lotus often does. It, it moves people's perception of that. So you have this built-in perception. We all have it, I think, from a young age of this is what a car will do and this is how hard I can turn it or how hard I can brake or yeah. whatever it might be. 
And a lot of people get in Lotuses and go, oh, that's just moved where I felt the limits yeah, were. Yeah, moves the goalposts, Whereas yeah, most yeah. cars you drive and you turn them hard and you go, oh, okay, that's the limit, I found it. It, yeah. it was there, that was a bit underwhelming. Whereas this, it'll normally, you'll go on this journey where you go, yeah. wow, this limit's a lot further. Yeah, and it's you funny won't say get that, there yeah, straight yeah. away. Because I've read that while. the Lotus will usually out-ability the driver. Yes. Where it's yes. normally the other way. It's normally our way around. Yeah. Well, it's just the it's a driver engagement as well, isn't it? Once yeah. you've driven one and you've been in one, you've been at that level of driving, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard it's, to drive. It, it comes back to this car, is, is it sits here like a, yeah, and any other car you'd see, but if you got under the skin of this car, it's more like a formula, like a single seater style car. Yeah, like it's got short, long arm suspension, so you get camber gain when you roll onto it. Um, it's, it's aluminium, it's right? Yeah, it's, it's an yeah, aluminium, aluminium tire. Yeah. So actually, this is a cool fact about Lotus. Um, it's all extrusions of aluminium, and they're all bonded together. So it's all just glued together. Um, the tub goes all the way to the front here, where yep. there's just a crash structure stuck on, yep. and goes all the way to the back, oh, yeah, yeah. where there's a subframe that's housed the engine. Yep. That whole tub, torsionally, is about a thousand times stiffer than any space frame you're ever going to build. Yeah, right. And it weighs uh, 66 kilos. Yeah. yeah, wow. That you whole thing. Up and leave on this so thing. everything. I put some chromies on my last project <laughs> car that weighed more than that. Yeah. Seriously. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so, a phenomenal so that's thing. where it comes yeah. from. You know, you kind of get this 66 kilo, super stiff chassis. Yeah. Um, and then you bolt on some suspension and you put whatever engine you want in. It's, it, it's just built to, to do it. And, and that's really, there's not many cars that are, come from that, that background. Yeah, you know, nice. they're, they're normally made by other, other methods. So in the interior, um, this does have a harness. Now, they don't come with a harness from the factory, right, Richie? No, that's right. No. no. Okay, and the harness bar that it's attached to, does that mean someone's added that as well? That would have been added, yeah, that's right. Yep, they don't yep. come in the factory. So the car's four, never four been tracked, half. clearly. Well, one says that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one careful over. Uh, I'd say looking at those belts, it's definitely been tracked, uh, but four-point squat harness, uh, really good. Really holds you in well. Um, yep. Perfect for yeah, the circuit. I get the impression also, you know, in the time that I was spent hanging out with you guys, you know, today and other times, that the people that drive Lotuses, I always joke that it's like they're IT nerds. Is that actually, like, <laughs> is that the case? There is a geekiness about Lotus, I suppose, yeah, you know, yeah. like, um, if you, you appreciate engineering and, and those kind of things, then... Absolutely, Lotus is a brand that you're going to probably be drawn to. Okay. Because um, so. the owners usually are a little special. <laughs> oh, okay. Like myself included now, you know. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. let's, let's dive that. into what I know is wrong with the car. The car will start, or it should do. I hope so. What does that noise mean? That's the immobiliser's gone okay. off. Yeah. Um, um, on. Now, normally the dash would now show something but the dash shows nothing yeah yep, and what's the, what's the red light mean that's the immobiliser does so that mean it's yeah. on or off that means it's on there oh but so there's something on there yeah um and yeah and you can you get an impression of how loud the, the yeah. car is like it's um when you're driving it's oh once you're driving it's yeah. savage yeah, it's, boomy, yeah. yeah it's just yeah, really it's really boomy, boomy. Yeah. so so the dash is broken. Dash somewhere. doesn't work. Yeah. Yep. The stereo doesn't work. Yep. The indicators don't work. So yeah, yeah, sometimes the hazard light switch can stick down, so that gives you. The oh, I heard indicator. sometimes yeah, that so if you hold the hazard button well, down and it. then try to use the indicators, yeah. then sometimes they work. Yeah, it's a dodgy. So nothing at the moment. So if we just. It's got nothing over. There you go. Oh. That's it. Richie's fixed the indicator. How did you fix that? <laughs> well, what it is, that's the hazard light switch there, which is a, uh, it just, it's where it's clipped in, it just gets, the switch can get stuck. Okay. So you just gotta, someone's unclipped it like that. Yeah. So you've got to push it, that's off, so you've got to push it back on like that. That completes the circuit then for the rest of the indicators for the flashy unit, so. Bang. There you go. What's there you go. the switch out of? What car? Astra. That's <laughs> a good old box of Astra, that is, right? Yeah. Is it? So are these stalks here. Yep. Yeah. Um, you got uh, Astra stuff, man, in your yeah, car. Yeah, all sorts <laughs> going on. Here. The mirrors yeah. look old school, or are they? There's a good old Austin Rover. <laughs> right, um, okay. Oh, sorry, Austin Rover Metro mirrors, which would be, yeah, 35 years plus old. <laughs> <laughs> but they're lightweight, that's the thing. They're lightweight and they do the job. And this and is how you adjust them. Yeah, you put your hand out there. Yes, I've noticed that, leaning over to that side. Well, otherwise, it adds more wire and more weight. Well, Switches. you've fixed one of the problems already, <laughs> Richie. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you came up. You've earned your first beer <laughs> for right. the day. I read on a Lotus forum, disconnect the battery, open the door, turn the key on, then hold the brake down for 10 yeah. seconds or something. And I tried yeah. that, that didn't work. But yeah, I read there's that a little the reset procedure you can do, but yeah. we'll just disconnect the battery we'll to do the reset. The first, just let it 
bail down yeah. and then we'll power it back up. So yeah, while we was coming here today, we thought we'd bring a new car. Same chassis, so it's oh. exactly the same. But have a look down here at this dash. Look at what is going on over here. So this, there's a, oh my God, that's just ridiculously good. Look at this. So, so this is a kit that Lotus make that retrofits this to my car. It's retrofittable. Is um, here's one we brought earlier. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, there it is. It's there's the uh, there's the cowl in with the GPS sensor mm. in. There it is. And the uh, there the nice little LCD dash. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> this actually looks. So much more modern as well, you know, like it kind of modernises the interior, but yeah, that's amazing. When you buy a car like this completely sight unseen off the internet from another state, you can get a good deal. But the flip side of that is that you need to allow for fixes and repairs that you may not have anticipated. And with an exotic car like this, that could really add up. Luckily for me, I'm getting to spend some quality time with a proper Lotus mechanic, which is an excellent opportunity, but also an incredible way of learning about the car and its unique quirks from someone who's worked on them for years. All right, so it turns out the reason my dash doesn't work is because the dash is boned. Now, we were gonna try and fix this today, but we do have genuine Lotus parts. Um, this is a Lotus dash, digital dash. So basically we will remove, Richie, do we just take this whole yep, section off? This little back. Pan, uh, panel off, yep, so we can fit it into the... That one vehicle. goes on there? Yep. That so goes plug. in there, we plug it in. Plug and, pretty much plug and play, yeah. So there's your left and right button scroll plugs here. That's probably one there, yep. Yep. So that's your GPS signal in there. And it comes with that whole thing? Yep, the binnacle cover comes, it has to because it's got the uh, buttons here. Scroll, oh, and that's how down. you go through the info. And that's how you can, yeah, it goes through the menus. Perfect. All you right. Getting on the tools, are you? Let's do it. Oh, yep. Yeah. You're hey, new. That's, a, that's a brand new part that bolts onto a car that's 12 years old. That's unusual. That's cool. I like that. So a bunch of the guys that work at Lotus are uh, Mighty Come Odds fans, I understand. And FA's like, I've watched every one. I mean, there's like 500 odd videos on there, FA. I mean, yeah, I've watched every one of them. Well, I think when he walked in, he was blown, he was starstruck. <laughs> yeah, right. I said, I don't know who this bloke is. He told me all about it, and he went, oh, okay, then I get it now. Yeah, it's some so guy funny. off YouTube, what a dickhead. All the wiring for the dash in the car is totally fine, so it's just the dash unit itself that's faulty. This new Lotus digital dash should be an excellent fix while also updating the interior and providing some additional features. It really is plug and play, simply using the car's factory wiring harness from the original dash. And that's it, it's done. Next up, we just need to add the kilometres and then register the dash to this car. There was also a dodgy battery isolator floating around in the boot, which was a potential hazard, so that's been removed. And next up, we need to look at the head unit because it is constantly blowing fuses. This exposed wiring is the culprit, so it's resoldered, wrapped up, and then the stereo's working fine, which means we'll also have this reverse camera, which in these cars is essential, as there is no rear visibility due to the placement of the supercharger system. And with that, every single issue on my Lotus so far has been fixed in just a few hours. Thank you very much for coming down. Thank you. I'm very, right. very excited about my first track day. All right. Completely sight unseen, <laughs> give me the lowdown. You, you've brought a rare car, um, it's got all the right bits on it. It's a, is it a supercar? We need to ask a journalist, so like, it's not really our no, expert. We, <laughs> oh, we actually did that, we asked a journalist. What he, said, what, he it? said it was a supercar, okay. yeah. We can call it a supercar. Yeah, find out when you're on the, you're on the yeah. track. Depends how you drive it. What I think is so. cool is that a bunch of your products that you've designed and made are already on the car. They've already found their way on there, so that's yeah, cool. It's, yeah, Means I don't have to buy them. <laughs> exactly, a lot of the bits that we need to be done are already yep. done. Um, the only thing we'd like to do is, is yeah, check the engine mount bolts, Richie. Yep, yep. That's something Make to sure there's no leaks. Of, but I, yeah, I think yep. maintenance is up with it. We'll get on top of that. Yeah, no worries. Tighten it all up. Cool, so dash is fixed with the new Lotus yeah, dash. Our stereo's working now. That had an earthing issue based on a reverse camera that was put in there, so that was just blowing fuses constantly. That's done. Uh, there was some battery terminal isolator switch that was floating around in the boot. Yep, got rid of that. Just a fire waiting to happen, so that one there's gone. Indicators. Um, indicators all working now. Yep. And we've gone for a drive, we've set up the gears, so that's it. See you at the race Now track. go yeah. chop some two sexies at the track, what do you reckon? Thank you, you so much for coming Thank down. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers, See you later. Mate. Do you want to go get some food?
Let's do it. There's a mad tofu just down the street. Do you guys eat tofu, by the way? Of course. Do you? Do you eat tofu, Richie? I, I, oh, do you? No. <laughs> Shit.